I have just restarted the machine, everything is fine. So what I was saying that in case of this part, that is uh, the second part, the cash and cash equivalents, then you can see property, plant and equipment, investment, receivables, daters, all assets and liabilities, equity. The remembering part is very less. Somewhere some memory and remembering is there. Most of them are application and all that. Notes payable, bond payable, maybe some remembering, but I will not say that is remembering. It is mainly application. The third part which is related with selected transactions. Again, most of them are application. Accounting changes, errors, rectification of errors, under select transactions, contingencies, consolidation, takeovers, mergers. Then you can say group accounting. All these are mainly, some memory part is there, but maximum is all application and uh, what I should say analysis. Now again the fourth part is state government you will see many areas which are remembering and understanding. Application is maximum but remembering understanding is at high level. At this level high level I will say that the last part fourth part will not take one or two classes more than that. Major time we will be taking in second area two and area three and as far as paper structure is concerned Institute says that in FAR, multiple choice questions will be 66 and task based simulations will be 8. Multiple choice questions that is one question, four answers, you need to select the correct one that is 66 questions and task based simulations will be 8 questions. But the, but the weightage of marks is 50-50%. Even though multiple choice questions are 66. But the 50% you will be getting marks on multiple choice questions. And on the task based simulations, you will be getting 50% marks. So 66 multiple choice questions and 8 task based simulations for FAR. Task based simulations as you remember that there will be one scenario. Based on the scenario, 5, 6, 7 questions are there. So like that there will be 8 scenarios and on the basis of 8 scenarios, questions will be given. So it is multiple choice question and task based simulations. Now, we have to start with the first part only, that is area 1. The area 1 is basically the conceptual framework, setting of standards, IES, IFRS, what is that, then some basic format of PL account, balance sheet, cash flow statement, then non-government accounting format. That is the basic part which is involves some memory part and then involves application and analysis. I will be giving one second. I will be giving three types of notes for for far. One is the slide notes which I will be regularly using in the class. I will be writing many things as you know that I have the habit to write something in the class. Then there is notes we will be using. One notes we will be using as a, I will say textbook. We will be using less. Most of the things from the textbook, the short notes and all that I have mostly prepared. Then we can see we will be doing MCQ questions from Becker's. We will be doing MCQ questions from Wiley exam kit also that we will be able to do the questions from two places and while discussion we will be doing some questions along with the class slides also. So I will say that we will be using we will be using Class slides, backers, question, question, bank, Wiley, question, bank, and sometime. Sometime means in some of the topics you can say financial instruments or maybe revenue recognition or maybe employees benefits. Those are slightly difficult in case of US gap as compared to IFRS. 
so in those areas sometimes we need to refer the study text also i don't want but maybe sometimes for more technical clarity we will be referring that otherwise major part will be this only and sometime wiley textbook also when the topic will be finished we will be doing some questions from beckers from wiley you will be doing on your own some questions when you get free time wherever you will get doubts we will be discussing that in the class accordingly we will proceed if you say me i will take around 3 to 4 classes in area 1 then around 5 to 6 classes in area 2 then around 10 to 12 classes Ten to twelve classes in area three, then around I will say two classes in area four, and you can say we can do some extra mock questions, some task-based simulations, extra so extra mocks for two to three classes. so we can see that if i will take upper level of classes 4 plus 6 10 10 plus 12 22 plus 2 24 plus 3 27 around 25 to 30 classes around 25 to 30 classes we will finish of far upper level 30 lower level 25 we can say around 30 classes we take normally since i have already taught this far subject since cpa two times now this is the third batch it will be taking around 30 class unless and until something we need to revise like in the previous batch i gave some 10 12 classes extra because some of the revision students said that can we do again we did again that way otherwise normally the syllabus will take around 30 classes to complete so if we regularly do in a week two classes it will take around eight classes in a month around 3 3 and half months it will take to complete september october november december maximum by december we will be able to complete and we can start from january the other subject i will advise auditing because 25% portion of our is related with auditing and then as we discussed we will be going for taxation because if we start taxation in january the rule is still old one but after february 2022 the new rules new books new materials will be available so we should be going for taxation around april when entire books and materials will be there so that we can study in the last leg the what i said taxation and what i said all four hours exam four hours exam 66 mcqs 66 mcqs and eight task based simulation major focus is on application the syllabus focus is on application and analysis if somebody want to mug up anything he will be finding problem in passing the exam because the exam is purely focus on your understanding on your application on your analysis it is not focusing on mugging up anything some of the areas are there that's other thing like initially what we studied today and at the end when we will be doing state and government accounting some areas are there but major portions are more of understanding so as you are always a student who understand the things better try to focus on that only now the first part which we say as in area 1 conceptual framework standard setting presentation of financial statements and all that the conceptual framework if we say in layman language in us gap there are so many us gaps in ifrs in international financial reporting standard there are so many is ifrs in indian accounting there is indian gap there is in ds so many accounting are there at least you can say we know three types of accounting other countries accounting we don't know but the other countries accounting are same only but whenever the accounting standards are developed they are developed under a frame under a framework under a boundary 
a cricket match is played or any match is played in a boundary within the boundary the rules are there who will be batting first who will be batting second overs and all that so accounting standards are within the boundary the boundary is set by the accounting body that is said as conceptual framework but the problem is that accounts is not science it's not that i will throw a ball on you then it will be going there it's not like that the organizations are private public listed multinational the organizations are individual partnership the organizations are in different different types of businesses the organizations are in different different economical country economical situations so accounts cannot be like that as a he nothing like that nobody can say that the accounting boundary can be made like you can say a playground it is a boundary i am not questioning but when within the boundary we made the rules we found that the rules are very open ended the rules are not so rigid or not exactly that you have to do this only we say that the ifrs and indian accounting is principle based whereas us gap is rule based rule based means whatever is stated i have to do i can't deviate from that but in case of indian accounting or ifrs we can deviate but by giving reason by giving logic that is not rule that is principle based but that principle based means does not mean that you can do whatever you like if you are not following the guidelines why but in us gap you can't say why when the guidelines is there you have to follow but the guidelines are different 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 for different different industries for different different things if we say there are so many plant and necessarily non current assets are there for different type of assets different type of accounting suggested written in us gap by the what do you say the fasb financial accounting standard board we always say that suppose there is a cricket ground there is a football ground there are two teams players are there the rules are set many times something the rules are required which are beyond the boundary of the playground then the rules which we are deciding are more relevant than the boundary similarly in case of accounting conceptual framework the conceptual framework says that what is the purpose of financial statement what is the purpose of accounts to fulfill that purpose what are the boundary has been set but when we made rules regulations laws for recording transactions booking the transactions then maybe sometimes we go beyond the boundary sometimes we are doing something which is you will say contradictory as per the boundary then the accounting body says that the boundary is not important what is said in a us gap what is said in an ifrs that will overpower the boundary that means something is stated in conceptual framework and suppose there is a us gap which is saying something else which is not correlating with the conceptual framework then what is said in us gap will be relevant the boundary is not relevant normally the accounting body don't like that they want to deviate but sometimes the confusion arises and we found that the us gap is not following the framework be going beyond the boundary the accounting body who make the ifrs who make the us gap and all that they give logic but people don't understand they raise doubts because accounts is not science as i said so the problem arises i will say that in exams sometime in one or two questions we face problems even though we need to answer as per the specific guidelines but because the confusion is there maybe in exam also in one or two questions we find problem but normally these areas that the boundary and the rules are different are very less normally the all the accounting standards which are made based on the proper boundary so the conceptual framework says that what is the purpose of financial statement when we prepare pl account balance sheet cash flow notes to accounts statement to change in equity auditors report directors report all these are part of the financial statement what is the purpose of this what do we want to achieve by doing this what is the purpose in us of preparing financial statement by any organization the conceptual framework states that in theoretical term 
we need to apply that theory in the practical world with examples regularly which we will be doing and then once the conceptual framework will be covered in the class then if there is a new rule new us gap new ifrs comes what is the process how the new ifrs comes in the market or i will say in india how the new accounting standard in as comes in the market what is the process of bringing that in the market and the third part each presentation of financial statement format of pl account format of balance sheet format of statement of changes in equity format of cash flow in uh, all these formats what are the options available what terminology we use those terminology we need to remember also because some person remember was there that is the first part we are covering okay my target is to cover this thing today in the class it will take around 1 1 and 1/2 hour to cover this with examples and all that so first of all conceptual framework the conceptual framework is designed developed in us by the financial accounting standard board in ifrs it is international accounting standard board iasb in us it is financial accounting standard board in india we have indian accounting standard board in every country there is a board who has taken the responsibility to bring new guidelines new rules new ias new ifrs new us gap so in us the authority who develop the new accounting rules and regulations for any new transactions for changes in the old one each fasb financial accounting standard board they have developed the conceptual framework establishes concepts that underline financial reporting conceptual framework is a boundary which says that when the financial statement will be prepared then the financial statement should be following these guidelines they are in three layers level 1 level 2 level 3 level 1 is basically the objectives of conceptual framework what is the objective of making the conceptual framework and when any accounting rules will be made us gap will be made they should be made based on the objectives so what is the objectives of conceptual framework that is the first level the second level to achieve those to achieve those objectives we need to achieve certain qualities in the financial statement what are those qualities what they say to bring those qualities to bring those qualities in the financial statement we record assets liability income expense owners equity drawings this that so many things are there when we understand about the elements what are the elements how do they defined and the characteristics then we will be able to achieve the objectives and once we understand the quality mane characteristics and the elements then to prepare financial statement by any us gap by any ifrs what are the assumptions made in preparing financial statement what are the principles used in preparing financial statement and when we prepare financial statement even for by following all the guidelines what are the constraints that the financial statement cannot incorporate this what are the limitations of financial statement that is level 3 when somebody want to study this conceptual framework they need to study three levels of things the objectives of the conceptual framework the qualitative characteristics and the elements based on objectives qualitative characteristics and elements while preparing financial statement what assumptions we will be taking what principles we will be following and what are the constraints in the financial statement prepared even by following us gap so first of all they are speaking about objectives the framework consists of concepts that stem from one main objective one prime objective of conceptual framework level 1 means it's a, you can say conceptual framework level 1 understanding objectives to provide information that is useful to present and potential equity investors lenders creditors in their capacity as capital providers now if you go into comma full stop the objectives of fasb conceptual framework written in a different english language the objectives of isb written in a different english language the indian objectives indian conceptual framework 
written in a different English language. But all the language are saying on one thing. In simple, I, if I will say, I don't want to mug up this because I cannot mug up. Whatever financial information we are giving to shareholders, customers, suppliers, employees, staff, general public, ROC in India, government department, income tax, anybody. When we are giving our financial statement, then they should be able to understand the events, the transactions, the profit, the loss, the assets, the liability. They will be able to take informed decisions by looking at that financials. Because if the financial statement are given to anybody and that person is not able to take informed decisions, correct decision, logical decision, not getting the full information, then there is no purpose of making any US GAAP, IFRS, Indian accounting, nothing. So the purpose of framework is what? The framework says that whatever financial statement we will prepare, whether PL, whether balance sheet, anything, they should be serving the purpose of the users. Who are the users? Those who have given resources to the company. Those who are creditors, those who are financiers, those who are shareholders, those who are employees, those who are doing any business relationship with the company. They need to take informed decisions. They should be able to understand. They should be able to take proper decisions based on financial statement. That is the objective of conceptual framework in all accounting of the world, not only US GAAP. The definition of conceptual framework in US GAAP is this. Provide information through the financial statement which is useful to present and potential. Those who are already connected with the organization as a supplier, as a shareholder, as an investor, as a financier, anybody or those who are going to become, those who are going to become having any relationship with the company as an investor, as a lender, as a creditor in their respective capacity, they should be able to understand, they should be able to take informed decisions. That's the purpose of objective of conceptual framework. To achieve this objective, they are saying that the financial statement should be fulfilling, should be giving these, should be satisfying these characteristics. That is level two, characteristics. One is qualitative characteristics. Under qualitative characteristics, they are saying through the financial statements of a company should be fulfilling these characteristics. Fundamental characteristics, enhancing qualities. Fundamental characteristics are again further subdivided into relevance, faithful re representation. Enhancing qualities are further subdivided into comparability, verifiability, timeliness and understandability. Many times some of the students or some teachers also want to remember these things with some code word. FRF, EC, V, T, U. I generally don't like. Isliye main normally class mein padhate vak kabhi bhi I don't use numerics and all that. Because mera aisa experience hai I am talking about when I was giving CA inter exam and in CA inter there was insurance company, electricity company ka format tha. To insurance company ka paper mere exam mein aaya tha CA inter mein. Aur usme main yaad karke gaya tha numerics. Ki insurance company ka PL balance sheet first question 20 marks insurance company PL balance sheet. I remember the numerics, but I could not remember ki uska naam kya tha. Suppose I remember CVTU, but with the C I am not able to remember comparability and all that. I generally personally don't like. Maybe many students like that, many faculties like that, but I personally don't like that. Usse badiya mein focus karta hon ki bhai, suppose I have studied this. Now I am doing something else, I am bathing, I am having food, anything. I try to remember, specific, I am not studying by opening the material. But I dhyan karta hon, like that. Ki fundamental me kya tha, enhancing me kya tha. I like that type of study. That study is not only when you open the book and you study. When you are free, going somewhere, nothing to do, you start thinking. That way you will be able to revise your stuff much faster. So you can make your numerics, I am not questioning. But I don't make numerics. And this is the fundamental or enhancing. This is the world of accounting. Everywhere it is same. Whether somebody is study accounting, US GAAP, IFRS, Indian accounting, three accounting I know, sub jaga yehi qualitative characteristics is written. Fundamental qualities, relevance, faithful representation, 
enhancing qualities comparability verifiability timeliness and understandability we need to go into these somebody will say that what is fundamental and what is enhancing actually if you say for working practical working there is no difference but if you go in technical differences fundamental means beyond without this the accounts cannot be prepared these are must and enhancing means if they will be there then they will be increasing the importance of the financial statement but i will say that all are important nothing can be compromised all these qualities should be there in the financial statement under fundamental they are saying relevant and faithful relevance means information is helpful in making decisions predictive value confirmatory value materiality maybe i will say in ifrs or in indian accounting they have explained the relevance but they have not written that under relevance there are three points the student or anybody need to understand maybe i am not questioning that but ultimately relevance is relevance only in normal language if i don't go in accounting relevance relevance of something in taking decisions because always i correlate relevance with relevant cost suppose you are interested in taking cpa classes if there are four places where you can take the classes and all the four places the cost is same then in that case cost is not the relevant factor relevance factor for you to take the decision but if the cost is different under a different alternatives then it is relevant for decision making so relevance means what relevance means it is relevant in doing the thing which you want to do on the basis of financial statement what i want to do if i am a shareholder and already invested in the company then on the basis of financial statement i want to decide whether i should remain invested or i should sell the shares and shift my investment to somewhere else if i am a potential shareholder i am not invested i am going to invest then i need to analyze by looking at the financial that whether i should invest in this company or other company if i am a creditor every person has certain things to decide based on financials the financial statement should be relevance should be should be having that relevance characteristics that it is giving that relevance to the users so that the users can take that decision suppose they are saying that under relevance predictive value confirmatory value and materiality predictive value predict means what predicting something confirmatory means what whatever you have estimated whatever you have projected is that is happening is actually happened materiality something which is important should be known to me something which is important if it is not said to me not known to me how i will take decision if i will go into more detail in accounting predictive value suppose i am already the shareholder of a company and i am looking at the pl account balance sheet of the company of last 5 years by looking at the 5 years growth percentage and all that can i predict what will be the profit in the next year can i predict what will be the revenue can i predict what will be the financial condition of the company now when you predict you cannot be god if we predict what will happen tomorrow there is no guarantee but by looking at the financials a predictive quality should be there in the financials when we do ratio analysis in any financial statement by looking at company with the competitor with the industry with the past we do some predictive analysis so the financial statement should be helping the users to predict something whatever prediction he wants it should be helping to do the prediction by the person confirmatory value means suppose i am already the investor of the company for 4 5 years i projected that based on the 10 months for the 2 months are left this is going to be revenue and all that and when actually the values are coming they are in that order only they are in that line that means the values which are in the financials they can be confirmed they can be said that actually they happened how they have been derived and materially means anything which is material important whether based on value whether based on event whether based on something should be separately properly recognized and reported if it is not properly recognized and reported i will not be able to use those information for the relevance purpose for the purpose for which i want to take decision so financial statement should be fulfilling this active value confirmatory value materiality value if i go into further deep this is i am saying theoretical explanation 
predictive value confirmatory value suppose when we will study accounting transactions and accounting you can say us gap relating to inventory relating to property plant and equipment any what we discuss what we will study whether there is an asset what is the value at what value we can record this whether fair value whether historical value how can we calculate that value how can we record it where we will record in this ledger in this pl account in balance sheet under this head ultimately when we are doing this the recognition measurement fair value historical principle all these are actually helping in all these three things they are helping in predictive confirmatory and materiality when we say cash and cash equivalents what is a cash equivalent when we say liquidity whether the company will be able to pay the current liabilities with the current assets or not they are all giving us predictive confirmatory and materiality values but they are based on us gap i mean to say that the boundary is saying that there should be relevance the cricket ground is saying that there should be a field this much length and breadth the radius and all that but in the cricket ground when the players will play how many balls and all that that will be you can say us gap ifrs that is specific accounting but whatever us gap is prepared up till now published or going to be published they should be fulfilling the relevance concept predictive value estimating something confirmatory value whatever you have estimated based on the past are actually materializing whatever values in the financials you can correlate how the value has been derived materiality anything which is important should be disclosed separately anything which is important should be communicated separately i can see predictive value estimation estimation confirmatory value confirmation confirmation of what should be that means based on the past and all that that should be the figure this should be coming it is coming and materiality means every important thing should be separately separately disclosed every important thing should be separately disclosed we can say this is framework but when any new us gap or any us gap which is made based on considering it should be fulfilling the characteristics of relevance if we go in what i should say technical write up as per the fasb relevant information is used by investors to form their own expectations about the future that means i will say expectation about future confirmatory value relevant information also helps users confirm or correct prior expectations that the account should be able to help them that this should be coming this actually comes materiality information is material if omitted or misstated it could influence decisions that user make on the basis of reported financial information so anything which is material is very relevant and that should be separately disclosed so that the decision maker can take informed the decisions when we go into what i should say enhancing qualities then faithful representation there were four things for enhancing quality conformity acha first second after relevance there is faithful representation faithful means you can faith on me i have faith on you i have faith on my family members you can say that i can faith, faith i can rely on my staff those who are working within the organization similarly we can rely on the financial statement the financial statement all figures pl balance sheet are faithfully presented to us without any bias without any problem the numbers and description match what actually existed or happened to br to bring faithful characteristics it should be complete it should be neutral and it should be free from error free from error without any 
you can see wrong things said i will say window dressing should not be done wrong presentations are not done and the financial statements are not prepared by thinking about particular category of stakeholders they are prepared in a neutral way and they need to be fully complete for completeness they all the information that is necessary for faithful presentation is provided all information that is necessary for faithful info representation is provided suppose i will say that in pl account or balance sheet we are writing something then in the next year we are writing the break up of that then in the notes to accounts we are writing the accounting policy explanatory notes and all that why just by writing in the pl account or balance sheet just by giving the annex share the job is not enough unless and until we don't give notes to accounts the policy the assumptions or anything whatever we have followed the completeness will not come if you are looking at sales of a company they are greater than last year but if you are not looking in the notes to accounts how the company is recognizing the revenue what is the principle by which they have recognized the revenue what is the new product the company has launched what is the new market the company has gone what is the inflation unless and until these things are not written in notes to accounts the information is not complete so for complete the information need to be necessarily fully fully given in the financial statement so that we will be able to understand exactly what they want to convey neutrality a company cannot select information to favor any one party to favor any specific shareholder institutional investor supplier somebody financiers anybody no free from error more accurate representation of financial item that means the value of the item how that is derived that is certified by a valuer where it is presented in correct heading in correct way that is free from errors when it is presented as per guidelines then it is free from error for any financial statement which is prepared in us as per us gap as per fasb conceptual framework they should be fulfilling the characteristics relevance and faithful representation then comes qualitative characteristics enhancing characteristics enhancing qualities comparability verifiability timeliness understandability comparability my financials is comparable with my competitors my financials is comparable with the my past and in the accounts india us everywhere we need to present two years of financials pl account current year last year balance sheet current year last year comparatives need to be given so comparability is most important thing in any financial statement verifiability when something is written in the financials as an asset as a liability as an income we can verify from where the figure comes some vouchers some ledgers some documents are there from which the verification can be done timeliness if the data is not presented in time they are of no use like you know that in india the government has said that because of the infosys software that the income tax return can be filed up till december and for you can say audit companies it can be 15 january why you understand that 31st march 2021 is the year ending and the department is saying that return can be submitted after 9 months also there is a problem institute i mean to say indian government is facing in the software of infosys nothing is happening in that the charters are saying that but they are compromising on timeliness normally if the results if the outcomes are not known to the stakeholder in time there is no benefit of that normally in developed the countries the financial statement should be ready within 3 to 4 months maximum but in india the courses are that but timeliness should be there and understandability understandable normally we say that everybody should be able to understand by looking at the financials the performance of the company but normally a doctor a engineer a it person will not be able to understand maybe the objective conceptual framework says that they should be able to under they can't even sometimes our type of person founds problem in understanding some of the areas but understandability is also an enhancing characteristics so comparability information that is measured and reported in a similar manner for different companies is considered comparable so normally suppose somebody will call me ki sir our company is an anir steel company i am saying a practical example one of the student 
has studied from me CA, CA inter CA final. Then he studied with me C ACCA. And then one day he called me and he said that I am working in Tisco. He is working in Tisco. And he asked that, sir, why can't I do depreciation like this? I said that, why you want to do? Why? Is there any justification? Why, is anybody in the iron and steel industry doing that? He said, no, sir. Sir, I think it's like that. Sir, if you think it's like that, then there's logic. कि अगर आयरन एंड स्टील इंडस्ट्री देर आर टेन ट्वेंटी कंपनीज इन आयरन एंड स्टील एंड ऑल आर डूइंग इन अ पर्टिकुलर वे यू वांट टू डू डेप्रिसिएशन इन अ डिफरेंट वे यू कैन बट द क्वेश्चन विल बी रेस्ड व्हाई एंड इफ यू डोंट हैव जस्टिफिकेशन लॉजिक देन यू कैन डू सो आई मीन टू से दैट कंपेरेबल मींस इट शुड बी कंपेरेबल विथ योर कॉम्पिटिटर्स विथ एवरेज इन द इंडस्ट्री विथ व्हेन दे बोथ आर फॉलोइंग द सेम पॉलिसी so you can follow different policy account says that but you need to give reason and us accounting is rule based the chances are less everybody in the industry need to follow the same principles verifiability when independent measures using the same method obtain similar results i mean to say you are following a different method to find the value of assets i am following a different method but we are reaching to the same conclusion that means different persons have a different way but the verification can be done timeliness having information available to decision maker before it loses its capacity to influence decisions if it is very late there is no use of financial statement normally accounts are prepared on yearly basis year can be march ending december ending june ending whatever understandability the quality of information that lest reasonably informed users see its significance the quality of information that lets reasonably information users see its that means when you see you can understand you can understand you can take your call you can take your decision that is understandability all the what i should say all the us gap accounting standards which are developed they should be satisfying the qualitative characteristics the fundamental relevance faithful presentation and enhancing comparability verifiability timeliness and understandability that's the first part now they are going into second layer second layer each i mean to say first part was objective of conceptual framework second level was one is qualitative characteristics the second each elements elements asset liability equity investment by owners distribution to owners comprehensive income revenue expenses gains and losses i have not written their definition here assets you can see that something which i can control something which is going to give me economic benefits something by which i am going to get the benefits liability is something in which i need to pay somebody or something and uh, i to settle that i need to give my resources that is liability equity in the business the assets are funded by two forces liability and equity equity those who are the owners in a company share holder share holders are the owners so the owners money is treated as equity investment by owners share capital retained earning if preference shares are part of equity they are investment by owners distribution to owners the company is distributing dividend cash stock bonus shares that is distribution to owners comprehensive income they are business transactions only but they are not a part of net income they are part of other income which say, can be said as other comprehensive income what is that we will discuss revenue in every organization the major activities which they did do day, daily day to day are revenues for me training classes fees for banks interest for a company selling lotteries the price of tickets in a cinema hall whatever they are getting the from the tickets of the cinema hall tickets that's the revenue to meet the to generate the revenue whatever expenses you are incurring in a manufacturing organization in a service in a trading anywhere and the gains and losses normally ifrs does not say gains and losses separately but us gaf says gains and losses say interest income interest expenditure or any other thing which are not of a normal trading nature they can be said as gains or losses i have not written their definitions because normally it's a simple but we can refer the definition from any material either wiley or any material there is no problem but 
why i have not written definition there is one more reason normally in exams they are not asking questions on definition of asset definition of liability and all that the questions are there on conceptual framework but the questions are not there on assets definition liability definition for that reason also if anybody want to go into these definitions and all that as i said in the beginning to the bachas at 11th 12th standard or you can see undergraduates i teach them assets definition liability definition the elements and then i teach them the basic debit credit double accounting equation they can do there is no problem i will give them the extra classes along with them there is no problem or they can be given recordings also now comes the third level the third level is basically four things three things one is assumptions principles and constraints assumptions principles and constraints assumptions are economic entity going concern monetary unit and periodicity economic entity saraf gurukul and prakash saraf is different the transactions of saraf gurukul saraf academy are different and prakash saraf is different even though prakash saraf is owner but the owners and the company owners and business are separate in case of legal language income tax company law maybe we can say that in case of proprietors a business and businessman are same partners and business is same but in case of company and in case of accounting language whether it's a proprietorship also business and businessman are separate in case of company it is legally also it is any way also company and investors are separate but i am saying that in legal language if i am doing business in my proprietorship in my own name then as per legal prakash saraf and prakash saraf proprietorship is same there is no difference but in accounting language prakash saraf business and prakash saraf is different and in case of company the company and the shareholders are different so we are going to record we are going to you can say present in the company the company's affairs the company's assets liability and all that not the investors not the owners assets and liability going concern whenever a business starts it will never end it will go on on for indefinite period or it will be going on up till that period for which it is formed never ending process monetary unit when we present pl account balance sheet cash flow anything we need to write figures in us the figures are in dollar in india figures are in inr in somewhere it is gvp or this monetary unit need to be selected by which you will be presenting your financials and periodicity the financial statements are prepared or you can see the conceptual framework says that we need to prepare the books of accounts we need to prepare the financials on one period basis one period is generally one year sometimes in the first year maybe it is 12 14 months 15 months but normally it is one year so economic entity company keeps its activities separate from its owners and the other businesses going concern company will last for ever or up till that period till it's achieve its objectives monetary unit money is the common denominator in which financials are presented periodicity company can divide its economic activities into different periods and every period is stated as generally of a year the principles one is measurement principle one is revenue recognition principle expense recognition principle full disclosure principle which is called principles four principle measurement principle in the books of accounts only those things can be recorded which can be measured in monetary terms death of a director cannot be measured in monetary terms that cannot be recorded in the books of accounts even though the concept is developing in the world integrated reporting that is not only financial should be reported but the non financial factors environment social then you can say manufactured financial intellectual all these things should be reported the world is more and more becoming aware relating to this because of the corona but conceptual framework does not speak about integrated reporting Conce conceptual framework those kits which can be measured in monetary terms they can be only reported measurement principle the most commonly used measurements are based on historical cost or fair value cost i am not discussing historical cost fair value because there is a separate us gap on that historical means we generally always say that 
historical value is the best value. Why? Because if I will say that I am recording the computer in Saraf Gurukul balance sheet at historical cost. Nobody can challenge my historical cost recording. Reason being that I purchased the computer say three years back. The invoice is there from the supplier in the name of Saraf Academy. The invoice is there that the computer purchased for 1,20,000. I am recording after charging depreciation, but I will say that I will follow historical accounting, historical value. The measurement can be based on historical value. Earlier, the accounting body says that historical value should be followed. Still they say, but now they are moving from historical value to fair value. Reason what? If I will say that this computer value after three years in the balance sheet is 50,000, but that is not the fair value in the market. If I will say that this property value in the Saraf Academy balance sheet, it's a 1 crore after depreciation. But the market value, fair value is 5 crore. So are we showing the true picture to the stakeholders, shareholders, suppliers? We are showing an asset at 1 crore, but its value is 5 crore. How anybody will be able to take informed decisions? So if you go into relevancy and all that, and when the auditor writes on the audit report, the accounts of the company provides true and fair view. How they are providing fair view when the fair value is not written. So the accounting is moving from historical value to fair value. But the problem with the fair value is that fair valuation. Huge problem. Huge problem. Maybe there are questions you can solve. We can take examples. But in practical life it is not a question. There are endless cases where you will be going into confusion in fair valuation. So those who want to follow historical principle measurement. They are saying that historical cost nobody can challenge. That is there any fault in this. But they say that, but those who want to contradict historical cost, they say that it is not the true worth of the assets or liability or income or expense. So fair value is more important. So debate is there. It will be a never ending process. But the accounting bodies are moving towards fair value more and more in place of historical accounting. Revenue recognition generally occurs when realized, realizable, and when earned, I realized you have given me the tuition fees. Whether it is realized, I got the money. Whether, whether I have earned, earned means whether I have completed the classes. I always, whenever I teach revenue recognition, then I give a very detailed example about my tuition fees. Whether I can record revenue or not, I am not going now. But we will be going into revenue recognition separately in US GAAP. More detailing is there as compared to IFRS. For that reason, initially I said, maybe sometimes in revenue recognition, we need to refer the exact text write-up also. But revenue recognition in simple term, accounts need to be prepared on accrual basis. So whether the money is received or not, it will be recorded on the basis of due accrual principle. When you have sold the goods, ownership transferred, when you have given the service, then in that case, you need to record revenue. If the money is received very well, otherwise due basis. If it is not received, then it will be written realizable basis. When the revenue is earned, you need to record whether you received or not. Earned means if you are selling goods, when the title ownership of the goods transferred. When you are giving services, when the services is delivered to the customer. You will say that sir, services is not delivered in your case. I will be giving example later how I will say that the services are delivered. Not a problem, revenue recognition is a very detailed topic we will be discussing later. Then expense recognition to generate revenue. Matching principle to generate revenue. Whatever expenses we have incurred, that expenses we need to deduct from revenue. Then only we will be able to get income. So follow the matching principle to record expenses. And full disclosures in PL, in balance sheet, in annexures, in notes to accounts, in explanatory statement, full disclosure. Provide information that is of sufficient importance to influence the judgment and decision. Financial statement in PL balance sheet, notes to financial statement in notes and supplementary information that maybe the notes are not sufficient. You need to give some explanatory statement, explain that thing that is supplementary information. If these things, three things are not there for any item where it is required, the full disclosure is not there. The principles are not covered. And in the third level, the last one, which is limitations of financials, even though the financial statements are prepared, 
by following conceptual framework by achieving the objectives by bringing the qualitative characteristics by understanding the elements by following their logical assumptions by following the principles still there are limitations one is cost constraint cost of providing information must be weighed against the benefit that can be derived from using it normally in ias for small and medium sized entities different ias the are there different in the sense more relaxed more subsidized subdues ias are there but for bigger companies listed in stock exchange multinational companies ias is different more detailed that type of bifurcation is not there in us gap but whether it's us gap whether it's ifrs whether it's indian accounting to prepare accounts to bring the characteristics to bring the relevance and all that we are doing all the things but somewhere if we found that the cost of giving that information is more than the benefit which we will be getting from that information that should not be given whenever the accounting body develop any new us gap ias ifrs they definitely analyze cost and benefit like suppose suppose we say that fixed assets land building plant machinery can be recorded in the balance sheet at cost or fair value why they are giving option when we go cost historical cost it is not giving fair value so we should be saying fair value why it is not allowed suppose in saraf academy i need to show fair value of my assets not bounded but i can company india says that indian accounting says that but to do the fair valuation i need to fees to somebody because fair valuation cannot be done by me i need to get a certificate for fair valuation then i can record fair value in bigger companies i will say listed companies they have assets of 1000 2000 crores they are ready to spend 1 crore 2 crore for fair valuation but saraf academy is not interested in spending 20 30000 for fair valuation historical cost theek hai i mean to say that the cost constraint is the reason for saying that the non current assets can be recorded at cost or fair value whichever you like they say why they are saying considering cost if the question of cost would not have been there they would not be saying that so anywhere in accounting us gap ifrs anywhere if anything to do to present in the financial statement the cost will be more than the benefit which we will derive generally the accounting body said that not required because of that we are compromising on the quality of the financial statement so cost constraint is a limitation and industry practice the unique nature of some industries and business concern sometimes requires departure from basic accounting theory suppose insurance suppose i will say mining companies suppose i will say a multinational company operating in different countries having branches subsidiaries you will find that they are relaxed for certain rules certain guidelines they don't need to follow why because the nature of the industry is that they cannot follow the entire thing so a compromise based on the industry practices is also there in books of accounts or you can say in financial statement two constraints cost and based on the industry some of the relaxations are, are given to some of the particular industry particular organizations so those relaxations are there those limitations are there in the financial accounting so conceptual framework is divided into three parts first of all the objective of conceptual framework the objective which is users will be able to understand and take informed decisions to achieve that objective there are two things second layer second level two things qualitative characteristics and elements under qualitative characteristics fundamental relevance prudence confirmatory and material faithful representation faithful representation was um, completeness neutrality free from error then we can see enhancing qualities under enhancing qualities comparability verifiability timeliness understandability then we go into level 3 first of all level 2 elements then level 3 under level 3 the basic assumptions economic entity going concern monetary unit periodicity then the principles measurement principle revenue recognition expense recognition full disclosure and then constraints some question 
according to the FASB conceptual framework for financial reporting to be useful. According to FASB conceptual framework for financial reporting to be useful, it must. You can say level one objectives they are saying. The financial reporting to be useful in what? In accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, provide information useful for making business and investment decisions, be understandable to those who have a limited knowledge of business activities, directly measure the value of the entity being reported on. Believe me, if suppose we are doing this after two months, or maybe somebody having general, generally doing this, they will think all are correct. But since we have specifically studied it today only, abhi only humne, humne kiya, ki purpose kya hai, ki jo users hai, jo stakeholders hai, jo financiers hai, wo inform the decisions le paayin. To provide information that is useful to present and potential investors, lenders, creditors, in their capacity as providers to take informed decisions. That is the purpose, that is the objective. So what we will say? According to FASB conceptual framework for financial reporting to be useful, it must be in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, provide information useful for making business and investment decisions, be understandable to those who have a limited knowledge, and directly measure the value of the entity being reported on. Which one will be the answer? Which should be the answer? Hmm. What we have studied, the objective of conceptual framework is what? So that the users can take informed decisions. The objective of conceptual framework so that the users... You understand that it is purely an answer can be given on the basis of memory. I can say understanding is there, but understanding and memory. It is not application or it is not analysis. This is a question of memory and understanding. So since memory may have dhyan nahi de rahe ho, ki purpose of conceptual framework is to take informed decisions. Ye sab hai, lekin ye purpose defined nahi hai. Purpose to ek hi hai. Information is provided in such a way that the users can take informed decisions. Provide information useful for making business and investment decisions. Establishes concept that underline financial reporting. The framework consists of concepts that stem from one main objective. Provide information. So answer B. <coughs> it is a question on what? <coughs> Conceptual framework, everything they are saying, remembering and understanding. From this chapter, normally application and analysis is not there at all. So questions right, tabhi hoega, jab hum log yaad karenge, you can say. Materiality and relevance are both defined by. Materiality and relevance are both defined by. Materiality and relevance. Under relevance, there were three things. Predictive value, confirmatory value, materiality. What was materiality? Something which is material should be presented fully, properly, separately. What influences or makes a difference to a decision maker? Qualitative criteria set by financial accounting standard board. The consistency in the application of methods over time. The perceived benefits to be denied that exceed the perceived cost associated with it. This is not the answer, this is a limitation. The consistency is basically, you need to do the same thing again and again. You can't change the principal policies, have a That is not related with materiality, only A or B possible. Qualitative criteria set by the financial accounting standard board. This is a part of qualitative characteristics. 
what influences or makes a difference to a decision maker but i will go with a because materiality and relevance are both defined by if they would say only relevance then i will go with b but they are saying materiality then i will say what influences makes a difference to a decision maker because material item will influence my decision for that reason they are material if the question is relevance are defined by qualitative characteristics but materiality and relevance i will go with a i am not sure but c and d are wrong fundamental qualities relevance faithful relevance information is helpful in making decisions predictive value confirmatory value materiality materiality and relevance what influence or makes a difference to a decision maker materiality all are based on understanding and memory somebody will say that sir mere ko acche se samajh mein aata hai lekin yaad bhi karna hoga conceptual framework multiple choice questions we can solve when we will read this two three times which of the following characteristics of accounting information primarily allows the users of financial statements to generate predictions about an organization which of the following characteristics of accounting information primarily allows users of financial statements to generate predictions about an organization which of the following characteristics of accounting information primarily allows users of the financial statement to generate predictions about an organization under relevance we discuss predictive value confirmatory value materiality this is they are talking about prediction and prediction is they are covered under relevance which of the following characteristics of accounting information primarily allows the users of financial statements to generate predictions about an organization which of the following characteristics of accounting information primarily allows the users of financial statements to generate predictions about an organization which of the following characteristics of accounting information primarily allows the users of financial statements to generate predictions about an organization are you getting why i am saying relevance reliability to we have not studied timeliness was there where covered timeliness timeliness was covered where under faithful presentation neutrality was covered there under enhancing characteristics we have covered timeliness predictive value they are saying information is helpful predictive value this is relevance according to the fasb conceptual framework the quality of information that helps users increase the likelihood of correctly forecasting the outcome of past or present events is called according to fasb conceptual framework the quality of information that helps users increase the likelihood of correctly forecast the outcome of past or present events is called i will say i am not getting this because i am thinking that confirmatory value but that is not in the option according to fasb conceptual framework the quality of information that helps users increase the likelihood of correct forecast the outcome of past or present i think they are saying predictive value only increase the likelihood of correctly forecast because it is forecasting predictive value according to fasb conceptual framework the quality of information that helps users increases the likelihood of correctly forecasting the outcome of past or present events is called predictive value this is 100% predictive value information used by investors to form their own expectation about future confirmatory value relevant information helps helps users confirm or correct ex prior expectation information is material if omitting or misstating can influence the decision so this is predictive value the enhancing qualitative characteristics of financial reporting are enhancing the fundamental are relevance and faithful presentation then the enhancing are four things comparability verifiability timeliness and understandability this is purely mugging up 
enhancing qualities are comparability, verifiability, timeliness, and understandability. That is C. According to the statement of financial accounting concepts, completeness is an ingredient of. According to the statement of financial accounting concepts, completeness is an ingredient of. Can we say both? Why? Because under this materiality, actually if you go technically then it is written only under what I mean to say that if we think of completeness technically written, then it is written in faithful presentation. Because comparability, verifiability, timeliness and understandability. If the understandability need to be there, then it should be complete. So in relevance, can we incorporate that? I don't know. Under faithfulness, it is there. But under relevance, it is there. If the information is not complete, can we do predictive value analysis? Or can we do materiality? Don't know this answer. What do you say? According to statement of financial accounting concepts, completeness is an ingredient of faithful presentation. Yes, that's 100% yes. But for relevance, whether I should yes or no, answer is A or B. I will go for A. Because relevancy will not be developed. Predictive value, confirmatory value, we will not be able to develop unless and until the information is not complete. Let's see. Faithful presentation. The numbers and description match what ex really existed. Completeness, they have gain, get, taken B. Because technically completeness is written under faithful representation. Technically it is not written under relevance. It is fundamental characteristics but completeness is mentioned under faithful representation. It is not mentioned under relevance. Under relevance indirectly I will say. But directly the language does not say under relevance, under predictive value, confirmatory value and materiality. They are not saying complete information. Complete information they have mentioned under faithful representation only. <laughs> for that reason too I am saying. For that reason they are saying it is remembering. Ultimately, even though if you understand, if you don't remember, you will be doing mistakes in conceptual framework. That is there not only in CPA, that is there in ACCA, in SEMA, everywhere. Conceptual framework, samajne ke baad bhi agar objective type questions hai, to ratna padega. Suppose you are giving ACCA, SBR, conceptual framework there also, but wahan par objective type question nahi hai, so you don't have to mug up. But yahan par aapko remember karna hi padega, koi option nahi hai. Otherwise, you will be doing mistakes. Even you can see, when I have studied so many times, mistake hota hai. Kyunki ma logic lagane ja raha hun, logic lag raha nahi hai. Without logic, jo memory mein hai, usi ke basis pe right hoega. So it's the thing like that only, bhai. And the second part also, which is standard setting full memory. Because these two things in the first part, conceptual framework and standard setting process, they have not said application analysis anything. Fully remembering, they are saying. A student answer tabhi je jayega, jab wo remember karke jayega. Remember karna jaruri hai. Ab now if we say in the second part is standard setting, you can say that for the time being, it's basically focusing on underlying principles still. Principles koi further define kiya gaya hai. But after that, just after 10 minutes, I will be going into setting. Under standard setting, it is something new things come, some derivative comes, there is no accounting guidelines for that, the public reported for that, the staff in the FASB developed some write-up, then that write-up it discussed with authority and all that, and then the staff is given a project, 
to develop an accounting standard us gap on that the accounting standard developed it is in the public domain for discussion the people are discussing giving comments and all that then again a final draft letter each a us gap prepared then it is in the public domain for two months three months and then it becomes an applicable us gap similar is the case in ifrs and indian accounting also ifrs develop karne ka us gap develop karne ka tarika ek hi hai बट वो टेक्निकली याद रखना पड़ता है तभी क्वेश्चंस का आंसर दे पाते हैं अदरवाइज एग्जाम में आंसर नहीं हो पाता है प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ में मेरे को नहीं लगता कोई याद करने की जरूरत है बट दिस इज नॉट दैट स्टैंडर्ड डेवलपमेंट दिस इज स्टिल अबाउट सेइंग प्रिंसिपल्स द बेसिक जनरल रूल अपॉन विच मोर डिटेल्ड अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड आर बल्ट आर हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट प्रिंसिपल बिजनेस ट्रांजेक्शन शुड बी रिकॉर्डेड ओरिजिनल कॉस्ट हिस्टोरिकल कॉस्ट इज द मोस्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव मेजर Objective means if I will say that the value of the computer is one twenty, nobody can challenge. I can say the voucher. I can say the payment done to the supplier. Revenue recognition. Revenue is recognized when earned, realizable, recollectable. When the earning process is virtually complete, owners have transferred services delivered. Matching principle for expenses. Match revenues with expenses. Match realized revenues with those expenses which have incurred to generate that those revenue. consistency an entity should apply the same accounting procedures from period to period to enhance comparability with competitors with their own full disclosure all material information be disclosed in the financial statement financial statement should provide the necessary information so that users can take informed decisions objectivity that is without bias without um, on the basis of proof on the basis of facts we need to give the detail financials and accounting information need to be independent verifiability the information can be verified from different different ways separate entity economic activities of the business are totally separate than the business owners continuity and going concern an entity assumed to have an indefinite life or at least the life sufficient in long run to achieve its objectives unit of measurement financial data should be measured in a common stable monetary unit periodicity the life of business is divided into time periods years conservative the practice of prudence that is while writing expenses liabilities we are you can say should be recognized as soon as possible but while recording income assets we need to be more sure revenue and assets should be recognized when they are assured of being received lower of cost or market value theory is applicable for inventory or many other assets in financial assets because of conservative principle prudence principle industry practice as we said limitations it may be necessary for an entity to depart from the strict compliance with gap due to unique nature of industry always we should be following in books of accounts the substance not the legal if i am taking an asset on lease but still i am writing the asset in the balance sheet as an asset leased asset even though i am not the owner because the accounts is prepared based on substance not based on the legality or illegality items are material if they could influence the economic decisions of the users based on the principles some questions which of the following is a generally accepted accounting principles that illustrates the practice of conservatism during a particular reporting period which of the following is a generally accepted accounting principles that illustrates the practice of conservatism during a particular reporting period capitalization of research no accrual of contingency deemed to be reasonably possible no reporting investments with appropriate market values reporting inventory at lower of cost it is simple because other things they have not said no issue a company establishes uncollectible accounts expense using the ratio of past actual losses from uncollectible accounts to past net credit sales a company estimates uncollectible accounts expenses using the ratio of past actual losses from uncollectible accounts to past net credit sales adjusted for anticipated conditions the practice follows the accounting concepts of i will go with matching consistency but consistency to wo hota hai na suppose you are following fifo basis of inventory valuation so you want to follow fifo only yahan par to wo log ye bol rahe hain ki hum log revenue ki hai revenue ke against mein we want to record provisions for doubtful debts 
allowance for doubtful debts. Then for that we are applying that what is last year bad debt as compared to credit sale that percentage we want to apply this year. So that is matching principle according to me. What do you think? Matching of expenses against revenue generated. Whatever revenue is generated during the year against that revenue there can be bad debt. So you are estimating the bad debt expense based on past experience. So according to me it is not consistency it is matching. Matching of expenses against the revenue earned. Matching. Uncollectible accounts expenses ratio of past actual losses from uncollectible accounts to past net credit sales adjusted for anticipated. Whenever you say consistency it's generally accounting policy. FIFO, LIFO, this type of thing. Investments, cost, fair value. When consistency means same policy followed. For your confusion I am writing. Consistency is related with policy. Consistency is related with policy. Matching of expenses against, against revenue earned. You have generated sales revenue during the year. Against that sale, there can be a bad debt. You don't know. But you need to estimate the bad debt. So you are applying the estimation principle based on last year. Which is not consistency. Because estimation of bad debt is an estimation. It is not a policy. When we say matching principle, it is for estimation or something. But uh, if we say consistency, it is for policy. Estimation of expenses each matching principle matching principle which of the following is a correct concerning financial statements disclosure of accounting policies which of the following is correct concerning financial statement disclosure of accounting policies? Which of the following is correct concerning financial statement disclosures of accounting policies? Full disclosure. Disclosures would be limited to principles and methods peculiar to the industry in which the company operates. Disclosure of accounting policies is an integral part of the financial statement. Yes, it's not that peculiar then only, it's an integral part. The format and location of accounting policy disclosures are fixed by generally nothing. Disclosures should duplicate details and disclose. No. Why duplication? Further detail about that. Disclosures. Integral part. You are correct. Which of the following assumptions means that money is the common denominator of economic activity and provides an appropriate basis for accounting measurement and analysis? Monetary unit. This is simple. Monetary unit definition they are asking. Now the development of US gap. The development of US gap by the FASB. Financial accounting standard board. Established in 1973. Establishes standards of financial accounting. That govern the preparation of financial reports. By non-government organization. For government organization FASB is not making the standards. For US government, US state government, for any government organization, FASB is not making the accounting guidelines. FASB is making accounting guidelines for non-government organization. Financial accounting standard board FASB establishes standards of financial accounting that govern the preparation of financial reports by non-government organization. Financial accounting standard board establishes standards of financial accounting establishes standards of financial accounting means US gap that govern the preparation of financial reports financial statement PL account balance sheet cash flow blah 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 by non-government organization FASB establishes standards of financial accounting that govern the preparation of financial reports by non-government organizations 
the standards are officially recognized as authoritative those standards are given authoritative that is approved by sec and aicpa sec and aicpa are not making the accounting standards are not making the us gap that is made by fasb but they are accepting as authoritative by the aicpa and sec the standards are pure memory if we memorize then we can write the correct answer the standards are officially recognized as authoritative by the sec securities and exchange commission of us and the american institute of certified public accountant the accounting standard codification is the single source single source of authoritative gap recognized by the fasb to be applied by non government entities the accounting standard codification means suppose there is an us gap 101 102 103 that codification is decided by fasb the accounting standard codification is the single source of authoritative gap recognized by fasb to be applied by non government entities and those i mean to say accounting standard code accounting standard code in us are general principles from 100 101 102 103 presentation are related to 200 to 300 assets are defined 301 302 303, 303 liabilities 400 equity 500 revenue 600 expenses 700 board transactions 800 industry 900 from 100 to you can say 1000 there are so many us gaps are there all us gap which are related with general principles they are from 100 to 199 all which are related with presentation they are 200 to 299 all which are related with 300 to 399 assets general principles presentation assets liability equity revenue expense board transactions broad transactions an industry when we study ifrs then we see we study is1 is2 is13 is16 is16 so many things but when we study us gap we don't study us gap number 1 number 2 because it is from 100 to 999 unlimited nobody can remember the number maybe in exam they are writing the answers by writing the numbers but we just say every us gap as a us gap because they are endless yaar so just a broader classification of code from 100 to 199 general principles for for presentation 200 to 299 assets 300 plus liability 400 plus equity 500 plus then revenue 600 plus expenses 700 plus broad transactions 800 plus and industry 900 plus the fasb issues accounting standards updates to update the codification whenever the fasb issue new us gap that is said as accounting standard updates the fasb issues accounting standard updates to update the codification and in the codification if it is 100 to 199 in 101 it is sub part 101a 101b so many things are there so numbers you can't remember not asked in the exam we are just saying that they are called as accounting standard codification any new us gap is called accounting standard updates the fasb issues accounting standard updates to update the codification rules and interpretative releases of the sec under federal securities laws are also source of authoritative gap for sec registrants suppose there is a company in us like saraf academy private company then whatever sec is saying that is not relevant for them but suppose somebody in us google any company in us microsoft in my us microsoft is a listed company they need to follow whatever separate guidelines given by sec for listed companies rules and interpretation release of the sec under federal securities laws are also source of authoritative gap for sec registrants for listed us companies all guidance contained in the codification carries are equal level of authority it's not that this is more important less all have equal level of authority all guidance 
the FASB, the rules or the procedures of described in the FASB operating procedures, the due process activities that are to be open to public participation or observation to provide transparency into the standard setting process. That is, it is a very open-ended process. The accounting standards, US GAAP are developed in an open-ended frame, not that in by hiding something from anybody. The process for issuing a new accounting standard update ins includes the following steps. Eight steps are there. First, the same are there in IFRS, the same are there in Indian accounting. It's not only US GAAP. The board identifies, that means the financial accounting standard board identifies the top level persons identify financial reporting issues something relating to something in the market issues are arising during corona impairment issues are arising based on request and recommendations from stakeholders or through other means either somebody is requesting some authority is requesting sec requesting aicpa requesting a general community requesting or maybe through other means they get some knowledge and the board identifies financial reporting issues into that. The FASB decides whether to add a project to technical agenda based on staff prepared analysis. The second step, the FASB then decides whether to make a project, add a project to the technical agenda based on the staff prepared analysis of the issue. On the basis of the issue, the staff will prepare a, a document on the basis of document, maybe FASB will make a project. The third step, the board deliberates at one or more public meetings that the various reporting issues identified and analyzed by staff. Now in any public forum, suppose there is a news channel forum or anywhere, the board will deliberate one or more public issues, one or more public meetings, the various reporting issues. The board issues an exposure draft, the draft is ready, exposure draft. To solicit broad stakeholders input, the board may issue a discussion paper to obtain input in the early stage of the project. The board issues an exposure draft. After the deliberate disclosures in the public meeting, the board will make a exposure draft, stakeholders input. That board may issue a dis discussion paper to obtain. That is, the board issue an exposure draft for the discussion. People will say something. The board holds a public round table meeting to do the, to discuss the exposure draft and the discussion. The staff analyzes those who are engaged in developing the IES, that is those who are the staff of the FASB. They, they analyze the comments, public round table discussion, all other information obtained through the due process. The board deliberates the proposed provision at the one or more public meeting. After the staff getting those informations and all that, the board develops the US gap and disclose that in the public board meeting. And the last step, the board issues an accounting standard update. A new US gap means a new accounting standard update. Maybe in 100, maybe in 200s, maybe in 300s like that. Describing amendment to accounting standard codification. Accounting standard update is called accounting standard codification changes. New code came. The accounting standard board, that is ISB, not FASB, international. The International Accounting Standard Board is an international organization to develop international financial reporting standards. IASB is an independent, not-for-profit, private, not-for-profit, private sector organization. Its objectives are to develop a single set of high-quality, understandable, enforceable and globally accepted international financial reporting standards. The objective of conceptual framework is slightly in a different English language. This is different, but both are saying same. To develop a single set of highly qualitative, understandable, enforceable, globally accepted international financial reporting standard to bring about convergence of national accounting in India, making India based on guidelines of IFRS. US making US gap based on guidelines of IFRS. There are many countries who have accepted IFRS as their own IES, as their own standards, but in India convergence is happening to bring about convergence of national accounting standards with the IFRS. The major difference or similarity gap is a rule based, IFRS is principle based. The SEC allows foreign companies, trade sayers in US market to file their IFRS financial statement without reconciliation to gap. In India, Infosys, 
have issued American depository receipts in US market. But Infosys, when presenting their financials to the regulatory authority in US, they are preparing their financials as per IFRS. They don't need to follow the US gap. The SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission of US, allows foreign companies, Indian company in US is a foreign company only, that trade shares in US, jinka shares market mein share buy sell hota hai, markets to their markets to file their IFRS financial statements without reconciliation to GAAP. GAAP is necessary those who are established in US, those who are formed in US, US companies. But Indian companies issued securities in US, traded in market, those companies can follow IFRS in US. There is no problem. Which of the following documents each typically issued as part of the due process activities of the financial accounting standard board for amending the FASB accounting standard codification? Which of the following documents each typically issued as part of the due process activities of financial accounting standard board for amending the FASB accounting standard codification. Abdesan. Which one is Abdesan? A proposed accounting standard updates. Position. Bulletin. Bulletin. Yes, B. 100%. Now you have catched. <laughs> Good memory. Which of the following accounting pronouncements is the most authoritative? Accounting standard codification. Because that is the authoritative and that is accepted by SEC, AICPA. Which of the following ac accounting pronouncements is the most authoritative? Accounting standard codification. Codification. So this you can see that very technical and they have already written these two topics are mugging up. Understand, remember, remember, remember. Exam ke din be, suppose your exam is tomorrow, today you need to read once these. So that you can do correct one or two questions, whatever will be coming out of that. Otherwise the mistakes will be happening. Not because of knowledge problem, but because of memory. Now this part is simple. Normal format of PL account, balance sheet, comprehensive income. Some here and there, they are 1% but this is very simple. Balance sheet format. In India, in IFRS, first we record non-current then current. But in US gap, they say that first of all current and non-current. That means just ulta, reverse. In India, we record illiquid then liquid. But in US, we record liquid, 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 illiquid, 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 like that. So first of all, current assets, under current assets, cash in hand, cash at bank. Then it will come debtors, inventory. But in India, in IFRS, inventory, debtors, then cash in hand, cash at bank. So it's just, just the reverse. But then the format is same. Balance sheet assets, current assets, long-term investment, property plant, intangible, other assets, Liabilities, current liabilities, long-term liabilities, owner's equity, capital stock. In US, share premium means additional paid in capital. They don't use the term share premium. Share premium means additional paid in capital, APIC, retained earnings. Both IFRS and GAAP allow the use of title, balance sheet and a statement of financial position. You can say balance sheet as on. You can say statement of financial position as on. But IFRS recommends, IFRS recommends what? That a statement of financial position we should be writing. So normally when you study ACCA, CIMA and all that, then the always heading for balance sheet is a statement of financial position. But when you will be studying US GAAP, on the balance sheet heading they are writing balance sheet also. In India also we can write balance sheet. But IFRS focus we should be writing a statement of financial position. Both IFRS and GAAP require disclosures about accounting policies. That is in notes to accounts policy need to be disclosed. Judgment made by the management in the process of applying the accounting policies. What the management has thought in deciding any particular policy. And the key assumptions and estimations. Estimation of salvage value, estimation of depreciation, estimation of provision, anything need to be disclosed. Both IFRS, GAAP, Indian accounting also. 
comparative prior period information current year previous year data need to be given current assets are usually listed in the reverse order of liquidity current assets are usually listed in the reverse order of liquidity now if you go in the pl account the pl account is single step format in ifrs us gap both same in i money ifrs us gap single step format means you are not showing operating income profit before tax you are straight away showing net income sales interest income total revenue cost of goods sold selling expense administration interest income tax total expense net income earnings per share no distinction between operating non operating you can prepare single step format for pl account income statement multiple step gross profit operating profit this pbt and all that you can show non operating section cost of goods sold sales gross profit sales administration operating income from operation then non operating income interest income dividend income whatever then interest tax then net income the same story is there but the presentation is single step format or multi step format it's upon you in us gap there is a term they use unusual gain and losses in ifrs we don't use unusual will be coming here only but they will be written after income from operations they have written that are unusual or infrequent should be reported in a separate section just above income from continuing operations not net not so net of tax before tax you will show tax later some examples write off or write down of assets exchange of currency log gain or loss from exchange of currency exchange of currency means what suppose i have exported and i am going to receive dollar the time when i exported the dollar value was 75 but but when i am receiving money then at that time dollar value is 72 so i am getting per dollar 3 rupees less that is gain or loss on exchange of currency gain or loss on exchange of currency they are saying unusual gain or losses gain or loss from transaction of foreign currency gain or loss from transaction of foreign currency exchange of currency exchange of currency you can say that you have entered into forward contract converting dollar into rupee and all that and trans translation means what i should say it should be gain or loss from translation of foreign currency actually whenever we say translation translation means what i have a foreign subsidiary foreign branch but then this portion they don't allow to write under they say that that is to be written under other comprehensive income let me come i am coming here just give me 5 minutes restructuring charges if there is any change in head office or mergers acquisitions other gains or losses from sale or abandonment of assets losses due to strike adjustment of accrual or long term contracts loss of strike gain or losses from changes in monetary exchange rates loss from abandonment abandoning assets they are saying these are gain or losses from unusual items they are part of income statement only they are written after in nahi that they have said that written above income from continuing operations above income from income from operation before that you will be writing here but in ifrs nothing like that that these need to be reported separately like that not written you can say as per materiality automatically separately reported but ifrs is not saying separately gain or losses from unusual infrequent items not like that expense can be classified by either nature or function nature means material labor variable overhead fixed overhead like that and function means cost of goods sold administration selling gap says that it is only function ifrs says that you can prepare pl account recording expenses functional basis recording expenses nature basis but most of the organizations in the world following ifrs are recording expenses on functional basis only no extraordinary no unusual gain or losses ifrs does not define key measures like income from operations ifrs most of the persons when preparing pl account then they are writing income from operations but ifrs does not say that you have to write income from operation gap does not require companies to indicate the amount of net income attributable to nci now this i cannot explain now maybe you can understand but many student when we prepare group accounts 
then we prepare group consolidated PL account. Parent subsidy, holding subsidy. Then in the PL account, we need to bifurcate in IES. Profit attributable to NCI. But in gap, it is not required. So the Jamela is less. Discontinued operation defined more narrowly. You can say that in IFRS, the discontinued operations are not that much detailed. I will say that in US GAAP, everything is more detailed as compared to IFRS. Everything. Just this thing, which is unusual item, which is they are saying translation of foreign currency, I will be telling. Just wait. The following info was, information was obtained from Brady company. Sales, beginning inventory, ending inventory, Brady's gross margin 20%. What amount represent Brady's purchases? It's very simple thing. Opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock is cost of goods sold. They have given you sales 2,75. Profit each 20% of 275. So 27, 27, <coughs> 55,000. 2 lakh 75 minus 55 is 220 cost of goods sold. Opening stock 30 plus purchases minus 18 is 220. 30 plus something minus 18,000 is 220. So basically 220 plus 18, 238 minus 30, 2 lakh 8,000. They are asking bacha type of question, cost of goods sold under cost of goods sold. Sales minus gross profit. Cost of goods sold, cost of goods sold opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock. So we can find out purchase balancing figure. Beginning purchase balancing figure, goods available for sale, closing stock, cost of goods sold. How we are getting 220, which is 2,75 into 80%. The effect of material transaction that is infrequent in occurrence, but not unusual in nature, should be presented separately as a component of income from continuing operations when the transaction results in the effect of a material transaction, material. That is infrequent in occurrence. Whether in IFRS, material item separately, in US GAAP to already. But not unusual, maybe unusual. Nature should be presented separately as a component of income from continuing operations when the transaction results in a gain or loss both. Whether it's a gain, whether it's a loss, since it is material, should be reported separately. It's A. Because... We can say that in IFRS, gain or loss from infrequent unusual are not written separately. But materiality makes them separate recording. In D companies, year two single step income statement. Single step. Not recording separately this, this, this. Operating income, PBT and all that. As prepared by draft controller, the revenue consists of the following. Please understand that. This is a confusing question. When we are following PL account single step approach, revenue means this sales only. Interest income you are recording, total revenue you are using the word. But total revenue includes interest. Revenue you need to say break up. Break up aapko dikhana hoega. So if they are saying something like that, in single step income statement as prepared by draft controller, the section titled revenue consisted of the following. Sales, purchase, discount will be adjusted with purchase. A recovery of accounts written off will be adjusted with what I should say. Administration expenses or selling expenses. Not going to be recorded with sales. Sales revenue is 2,50,000 only. It is not interest income or something. The answer is 2,50,000 only. Revenue is 2,50. Answer is A. They are saying single step, but in single step it is not saying about interest income, dividend income, something. Then you can say total revenue is this. But if they are saying revenue with the purchase discount, purchase discount adjusted in purchases, not in revenue. Recovery of bad debts is adjusted in the selling expenses or administration expenses, not a part of revenue. They are adjusted with the expenses. We company trial balance income statement accounts for the current year ended 31st December included the following. 31st December details. Sales, cost of sale, administration, loss on sale of equipment, sales commission, interest revenue, freight, loss on early settlement, uncollectible accounts. What is the question? We company's income tax in we year end multiple what amounts should be reported as income? Even though they are asking multiple, but they are asking net income. Why I will be preparing fully in the exam? Total sales and revenue is 6 lakh, total kharcha is 420. Income is 180, 
180 minus tax 30% 54,000. So 180 minus 54, what is the income? 180 minus 54,000. 126. If suppose they will say that they, they are following multiple step approach and gross profit, then I will say 575 minus 240. If they will say operational income, then I will say something. But when they are given detail and they are asking net income, whether it's a single step, whether it's multiple step, net income is a net income. 1 lakh 80, 6 lakh minus 420, 180, 180 minus 30% that is 1 lakh 26,000. It's shortcut, not required any long cut in the exam. Now relating to this comprehensive income, just will take further 10-15 minutes. Comprehensive income, comprehensive income means in the PL account, either you can have two parts, net income, other comprehensive income, total comprehensive or you can prepare other comprehensive income, comprehensive income as a separate statement. IFRS, US GAAP, Indian accounting everywhere. Earlier at my time in 97, 98, 99 time, we used to prepare PL appropriation. Now there is no PL appropriation, it's you can see other comprehensive income. But at that time more and more historical cost accounting, now it is fair value accounting. So there are some items which are recorded which are not infrequent, which are not unusual, but which are not part of net income. Items that bypass the income statement are included under concept of comprehensive income. Comprehensive income includes all changes in equity during a period except those resulting from investment by owners and distribution to owners. Means if there is a share issue, if there is a payment of dividend to shareholders, that will not be coming under other comprehensive. That will be coming under a statement of changes in equity. But other comprehensive is a part of income statement, other comprehensive which includes certain items. You can prepare income statement two parts, net income, other comprehensive, you can prepare one single statement, one statement combined approach. Both is allowed in IFRS, US GAAP, Indian accounting. In case of one statement approach, the traditional net income is one total. The total comprehensive income is final total. In total comprehensive income, other comprehensive income are added. Advantage of this one statement, advantage creation of no new financial statement, but disadvantage many times. I was teaching in the Friday class only the IFRS class financial reporting. One student said that, sir, revaluation of assets is not an income. Why we are showing? Then I told him that revaluation of assets we are not showing as a net income. Why we are showing? Because we need to show fair value of assets in the balance sheet. Then he understood. So even a knowledgeable person can ask questions. Why we are disclosing, I mean to say, other comprehensive income and all that. The disadvantage people don't understand. What is the logic of this? It is not a realized income, unrealized. But it is a separate part of income, other comprehensive income. In two statement approach, you prepare separate net income and other comprehensive income. It is a separate statement which indicates that gain or loss is identified as other comprehensive income. Have the same status as traditional income, but they are other comprehensive income. What are the items? Translation, gain and losses on foreign currency. Now you see that translation gain or losses in foreign currency as per US GAAP, as per IFRS is a other comprehensive item. And they are also they are rising translation, translation gain or losses on foreign currency. And here also you will see they have written that with which we are under confusion. Here also gains and losses from translation of foreign currencies. Gains or losses according to me, suppose I am in India and I have some dollar also in my cash. I have 2 lakh rupees cash and I have 20, uh, say 500 dollar. So 500 dollar last year also was there, current year there, but the value of dollar has changed. So that change loss gain will be coming as gain or loss in PL account, net income part. But if there is a subsidiary, if there is a branch and the assets and liabilities of the branch are in dollar and I am converting them into INR to prepare financial statement, then that will be coming here. Are you getting? If a US company has a US dollar, GVP, Great Britain pound, dirham and all that, 
then those currencies need to be changed at the end of the year to write in the balance sheet because dollar balance sheet that gain or loss will be coming in net income but if there is a foreign subsidiary foreign branch their assets and liabilities are converted because of that there is foreign exchange gain or loss then it will be coming other comprehensive income translation gain or losses are you getting for that reason i was not saying earlier hello the foreign subsidiary the foreign branch changes in the assets liability value is other comprehensive income that is not net income in the net income you are recording foreign currency gain losses on export on import on any currency you have in foreign currency change in the value that is recorded in net income but they will be treated as a us gap gain or loss on unusual or infrequent items like that pension over and under funded calculation in ifrs in us gap both actuarial valuation those companies which are following defined benefit plan maybe you are not getting now but when we study that chapter you will understand the fair valuation by the actuary gain or loss coming here which is not a realized gain or loss gain or loss on cash flow hedging derivative instruments if i am going to take loan after 6 months the interest rate may go up so i am entering into derivative the cash flow has not arisen the loan will be taken after 6 months if there is any gain or loss arising that will be coming here in us gap also ifrs also unrealized holding gain or losses unavailable for sales securities saraf academy has invested surplus money in reliance stock my business is not purchasing and selling reliance for me it's an available for sale security i am recording at fair value the gain or loss will be coming here both in ifrs and us gap financial liability is measured using fair value option the change in the fair value caused by change in the instrument specific credit risk will be going here same in the ifrs us gap now here nothing we are understanding now because not a single chapter we have studied foreign subsidiary then pension employee benefits defined benefit plan hedging hedge accounting unrealized gain or financial instrument financial liability nothing we have studied at this level neither you or any student will not be able to understand this just that we are concentrating as a memory type that these are the items which are coming under other comprehensive income they are not net income they are other comprehensive income in ifrs one more item in ifrs one more item revaluation of property plant and equipment in ifrs one more item revaluation of property plant and equipment two options in ifrs combined or separate in ifrs revaluation of property plant and equipment but in us gap no in us gap revaluation is a realized gain this results in more transactions affecting equity but net income so in ifrs other comprehensive income is more broader b company had the following items share revenue loss on early settlement of bond realized gain on sale of investment transaction translation gain on foreign currency translation gain on foreign currency loss on write down of inventory what they are asking which of the following amounts would be statement of comprehensive income report as other comprehensive income now sales is not other comprehensive loss on extinguishment of bond not other comprehensive Re realized gain on sale of investment not other comprehensive translation gain this is gain or loss maybe in foreign subsidiary branch only on foreign currency that is going to be other comprehensive write down of inventory is realized gain or loss only that is net income only only one item translation gain or loss 17000 because this 17000 figure will be coming under other comprehensive income why they are saying loss maybe there is a loss for that reason but they have written here translation gain and in the option they are writing loss they are writing this only answer is this but the question is slightly wrong this should have been written translation loss or maybe here it should be 17000 other comprehensive gain that should be written otherwise slightly wrong it is there what is the process of reporting comprehensive income to summarize all changes in equity from non owner sources to reconcile the difference between net income and cash flow provided from operating activities to provide a consolidation of the income of firm segments to provide information for each segment of the business what is the purpose of reporting comprehensive income 
So summarize all changes in equity from non-owner sources. Can we say? Because owner sources, share capital and all that will be coming under statement of changes in equity. Under comprehensive income, whatever owners has not given, but there is some gain or loss. Maybe you, it is a foreign subsidy, maybe it is a, you can say available for say. These are non-owners changes, which are not part of net income, but which are part of other comprehensive income. It's A only. Reconcile the difference between net income, no. Provide consolidation. Consolidation of income, no. To provide information for each segment, no. Answer is only 100%. Changes in equity from non-owners. Changes in equity from owner's point of view is a statement of changes in equity. Comprehensive income includes all changes in equity during a period except those resulting from owners. Answer A. A company reports the following information as of December 31st. Sales revenue, cost of goods sold, operating expense, unrealized holding gain on available for sale, debt securities, net of tax. Unrealized holding gain. This is other comprehensive income. And these are net income part. What, e what amount should company report as comprehensive income? Now there is a confusion always, even in my mind also. Comprehensive income means 30,000 or comprehensive income means net income plus other comprehensive total. Net income is 8 minus 6 minus 90. That is coming 110. And 30,000 is other comprehensive. So whether we should answer only 30 or whether we should answer 140. Whether we should answer only 30,000 or should answer 140. Please remember the word. Remember. If it is other comprehensive income, then you say 30. If it is comprehensive income or a total comprehensive income, it is net income and other comprehensive combined. Net income 110, other comprehensive 30, total is 140. Answer is C. All changes in equity during a period except those resulting from investment by owners comprehensive income is divided into comprehensive income or total comprehensive income divided into net income and other comprehensive. If say other comprehensive, then 30. If say comprehensive or total comprehensive, total. This is net income, this is other comprehensive, total comprehensive income 140. So if the question is comprehensive income or the question is total comprehensive income, it is net income and other comprehensive income both. 140. What I would say that the objective is to cover what in the today's class, what was our objective? Conceptual framework, standard setting, presentation. In this I have not yet discussed a statement of changes in equity, a statement of cash flow, under cash flow operating investment financing activities. We will need to discuss that. Then we will be going into a statement of Government organization or a statement of other types of organization, trust and all that. Then you can see group accounting statement. What are some changes? That is all there in area 1. Conceptual framework, standard presentation. Under presentation we have not yet done. A statement of changes in equity, statement of cash flow, a statement of trust or something like that. Not for profit oriented organization. Then you can see consolidated group statement format. All these are area 1. Then we will be going into area 2. So I said that in area 1, I will be taking around 3 to 4 classes. Means what? Second class, we will be doing a statement of changes and equity, statement of cash flow and all that. If time permits, some other statements also. In the third class, we will be doing a statement of a trust format and all that. Then consolidation. Then maybe some questions and all that are left. We will be doing in the fourth class. If finished in third class, very well. Then we will be going into area 2. That way. The first part is all different types of statements. So that when the transactions are arising, you know that where it should be recorded. Assets, income, expenditure, liability like that. And then a special type of transactions. Lease, mergers, takeovers, consolidation. That is a special type of transaction. Area 3. And area 4 is focusing on government accounting only. That way the syllabus is divided. Okay. I will be go on distributing the notes. Some are ready, some are not structured in that way. But you will be able to start preparing on your own. And I will say that if you are studying this, it is fully relevant with ACCA, SBL, SBR. No tension. 
So you can focus on this ACC as we are side by side is getting completed. Both are together, you can finish. It's very well. You are very well set, set toned. And we will be completing wherever you have doubts in SBR. You can ask in this class, there is no problem anytime. And regularly study around one, one and a half hour so that you will be able to give exam. Okay. So meeting with Thursday, Thursday evening. Next class, Thursday evening. Okay. Tada. Thank you. Take care.